Good evening and welcome to the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for March 2014. Carol, could you please run the control for us, please? Mr. Crockett? Here. Mr. Dillon? Here. Mr. Loisel? Here. Mr. Massisso? Mr. Richard? Mr. Stark? Here. <coughs> Uh, I'd like to start the meeting with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, and then we'll... I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Just to let you know, we, uh, we have a minimum quorum tonight, which is four of us. The downside to having a minimum quorum is if we have a tie, that is a loss in your favor. So I have to apologize. And you have, a, you have the right to um, change nights if you want to, or we can proceed. Uh, what I normally recommend is that we proceed and start. And then if it looks like it may not be going your way, we could uh, make a motion, if that makes uh, sense to you. Yeah. All right, great. Yes, thank you. Um, I'd like a motion on the minutes, if anyone. So moved. Second. All those in favor? That's four approved. Our first appeal tonight is Appeal 2013, which is George Hansen, the owner of the property of 6 Avenue 2, Matthew 22, Lot 56, under the provisions of uh, Scarborough Zoning Ordinance. We are doing a practical difficulty appeal. The elevation of the dwelling unit is going to be moved by two feet and they're going to demolish and rebuild the existing porch in the same footprint, three feet from the east property line, 4.67 feet from the north property line. The basis for the appeal is that uh, our, it's in a R4A zone, requires 15 foot setbacks on the side and 30 foot from the front. So if you could state your name, your address, and uh, give us a brief explanation on the appeal. Yeah. Andy Morrill, BH2M Engineers, here representing the applicant, uh, George Hansen. Um, the, the chairman just made a good summary there of the project, so I will be brief. Um, <coughs> 6 Avenue 2 is the address of the parcel. 15-foot minimum side setbacks. Uh, as he stated, it's currently 3-foot setback on the east and a 4.67-foot setback on the northern side of the building. We're talking about the building on the eastern portion of the property. There are actually two buildings on this parcel. Um, shown on the plan that I sent in as the Ella Jane building. Um, in our literature to the board, we had recommended that, or we had requested <coughs> that the applicant wanted to raise the building two feet and put it on uh, posts. Uh, since that time, we've learned that the applicant is interested in putting it on a foundation, so I wanted to make that uh, clear to the board this evening. Uh, the horizontal location of the building will be put right back to where, where it is today with the same setbacks, so we're not making it any more non-conforming than it exists today. We're just simply trying to raise the building two feet and reconstruct the eight foot by 24 foot uh, porch, if you will, on the side of the building. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions the board has. I'll open it up to the board for questions, comments. Like to hear the comments from Brian. You got it. So I'll move to uh, Mr. Longstaff. Uh, could you give us a brief explanation of uh, how this came across your desk and why we're doing this type of an appeal? Um, well, uh, in my staff comments, which I hope you all got a copy of, um, I tried to sum that up for you. Um, we've run into this on numerous occasions where an existing non conforming building or grandfathered building, as some would call it, um, needs to be. Um, beefed up, the foundation may be deteriorating, um, and in doing so, oftentimes it's in the flood zone, so they need to elevate it. They're required to elevate it. In this case, it is not currently in the flood zone, but it is shown as being in the flood zone if the preliminary uh, D firms that came out for 2013 are, are adopted. So I think, you know, a wise course of action uh, in Mr. Mr. Hansen's um, credit Mr. Hansen for wanting to elevate the structure to make sure that it's at least as flood compliant as, as we can guess it will be because we don't really know what the final uh, elevation is going to be once the uh, once FEMA issues its um, uh, determination. So 
he, he wants to try to elevate it an additional two feet. Um, and in doing so, the difficulty arises in trying to keep the existing porch, which is a one-story structure, attached to that side of the building and try to elevate everything at the same time and get it elevated enough to put a foundation underneath it. Um, it made, I think in their minds certainly, it made more sense to remove the porch, uh, giving them better access to the main structure in order to elevate that, uh, jack it up and elevate it and, and place the foundation underneath it, and then put the porch back. Um, the ordinance is clear that an elevation of a building, a non-conforming building, is, is considered an expansion of that building in, in height, and therefore it requires an appeal uh, or a variance uh, to be approved in order to do that. Additionally, putting the porch structure back on after tearing it down in a non-conforming manner, which is no more non-conforming than it is now, but it's still non-conforming, would also require a variance appeal uh, approval. So it's kind of a two-pronged appeal, but uh, you know the, the request is to remove that porch, elevate the building, which is prudent to do, uh, and then rebuild the porch uh, and attach it back onto the structure as it currently exists, only a little higher. Uh, the building will not in any way, shape, or form exceed the building height requirements. Uh, it will be, as stated, uh, much closer than 15 feet, but no closer than it currently exists. Um, I think that was basically a summation of what my comments were. Okay, and this is a practical difficulty appeal. Um, is there a reason why we went in that direction? Because it is a harder appeal to approve over any other type of appeal. Is that the best way to go? Just well, actually, it, it isn't. It, okay. the, strand, the standard variance appeal is the appeal in which they'd have to prove hardship and reasonable return. Okay. Uh, the practical difficulty uh, does not require quite as tough a test to meet. It's sim you simply have to, the applicant or the appellant rather, has to make the case that there is a practical difficulty that they can't overcome unless they are granted this variance appeal. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the board? Um, just a quick question to follow up. <coughs> By taking the porch off, what's the likelihood of that, without going out of their way, that the porch putting it back on, if they were able to raise it, is going to be structurally sound. That that's the whole point. I mean, a is it going to withstand the the process of elevating, uh, and, and is it going to be structurally sound afterwards? And, and that's why the new porch would be made to be more structurally sound. Is that? Am, am I missing the question? No, I just I just wanted to put something out there basically saying that there's really no way to elevate the building without or putting that porch back well, and still have it sound. Well, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, argu it's an arguable point. It's definitely more difficult to raise the building with the porch on it, and, and then you don't know if it's going to withstand those stresses of being elevated. Uh, certainly tearing it off makes it, as I said, easier, I think. I think the applicant would agree it makes it easier to get to the building, elevate it, do the work that needs to be done, and then put a, a, a much, much more, a, you know, a new porch back on, same dimensions, same size. Uh, it's put to the board if that meets the test of, of hardship. Um, all they all they want to do is what anyone would normally do if you weren't uh, that close to your property line. You'd be doing this in the same way. It's just that this thing has existed in this non-conforming state for many, many years, and, and uh, they don't really want to reposition it. We've, we've heard cases before where sometimes, even though the thing is non-conforming, everyone in the neighborhood is used to it being there. It doesn't bother anyone there, and then when we try to make them put it into a more non-conforming, uh, a more conforming footprint, it blocks, all of a sudden now it's blocking somebody's view or whatever, so it's, it's one of those kind of catch-22 situations. You're, you're darned if you do and you're darned if you don't. But in this case, uh, you know, it's certainly more, I look at it, although it doesn't probably meet the definition of maintenance and repair, it, that's really what it is. It's maintenance and repair. Uh, the porch, I think, Mr. Hansen, you can address this. Uh, 
What condition is the porch in now? George Hansen. I just started out to replace the porch because the underpinning, some of the stringers are getting funky. The ports are funky. It really needs to be rebuilt in that. And it's been in there since 1997 when they were good. Just to make sure it's in there. We have to walk up to, right up to the floor in the cottage because it's sitting right on cement blocks on the ground. And it being on a 50 foot wide lot to work under it, jack it up to put it on a foundation. I figured if I took the porch off, it would give them more room to work. Then after it was up and solid, just rebuild the porch, really the same size. So that's why I was, the big reason I was taking the porch off, it needs to be rebuilt if I leave the cottage or set it on the ground. But if I get it up on a solid foundation, get that solid, then put the porch back on, on a solid foundation. It should be set for quite a few years. And it doesn't so appear that you're looking to go up with the porch at all. You're just put looking to the same height, width, frame. It structure. really brings everything up to two feet. But you're not going to add on to the porch is what I'm saying. The, no. the porch essentially will be the same exact It'll size. It'll stay the same size. Yeah. That's all I had. It's been there since 1915, 18, someplace. So it's it looks like it's been there for a few years. It's served as you. <laughs> Thank you. Any more questions or comments? Oh, yeah. <coughs> it appears to be re relatively straightforward. Um, in order to, to uh, raise the porch at the same time as the building, clearly you're going to jack them at the same time. It takes risks to, uh, to do that, and there's a potential for damage to the structure as well. So uh, I agree that it does make sense to take it off and uh, put it back. And you're not changing its shape. You're not making it any larger. So uh, it will be going back in the same form. So that, that's good for you. Yes. Uh, are there any letters from the public? No, thanks. Okay. Seeing uh, no, exactly. Seeing no uh, no letters from the public, I'm going to open it to the public. Seeing as there's no one from the public to speak about this, I'm going to close it back up, and we're back at the board for questions and comments. So we have to go through the. We do. Yeah. Okay. We uh, we have some legal questions that we need to go through. Uh, being a practical difficulty, these questions uh, need to be answered. So if you could come up to the podium so you could speak to them. Yeah, well, what we'll do is we will go through each one and, and vote each item as we go through it. And then uh, we'll do an overall vote at the end to approve or disapprove the variance. So the question that's, uh, that's being asked is the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not the general condition in the neighborhood. If you'd speak to that. I'm sorry, could you say the beginning of that I, again? They certainly can. The need for the, the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not the general conditions in the neighborhood. Yeah, that's correct. The uh, need for the variance is to raise the building to protect the building from a flooding point of view. Um, not necessarily the character of the neighborhood that we're trying to get around. Yes. And I agree with that. Based on what I'm seeing with this appeal, um, the changes are being made to uh, build the infrastructure of the building, not to change it, modify it, or make it that much uh, more livable. So uh, I agree. This is around this circumstances of this property in this location. I would also have to agree. I think if, um, if you were trying to expand uh, uh, out to the size, I would have some additional questions on that. But since it's just uh, going straight up, I think I'm good with that. Okay. I agree as well. I would agree. Okay. So on this question, I'd like to take a vote. Yep. yep. All those in favor? So yeah, that's four. The granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not have an unreasonably detrimental effect on either the use or the fair market value of the budding properties. No, I, I don't believe it will. The, uh, again, the, the non-conforming portion of this site is, is not being made any more non-conforming. We're not getting any closer to any property lines. Simply trying to improve the structural integrity of, of this building that's been there for a long time. So I don't think it will have any impact to the abutting properties or certainly their... Okay, thank you. Board members. I agree with that. That's pretty clear cut. Yeah, I don't see that there would be any uh, detrimental uh, issues with the neighbors. I agree. It appears it's going back the same way it is, just a few feet higher to make it safer in case of flood. So I agree as well. 
no changes to the structure. We're good. All those in favor? That's for yes. Practical difficulty is not the result of an action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. No. Um, well, I, the, the building was built at this location, you know, at this elevation. Like I said, it was 1915 it was built, something like that. Yeah, long time ago. So um, certainly the, uh, you know, environmental concerns around this area may have been a lot different back then. So certainly not anything that Mr. Hansen had created in this hardship. It's uh, something that, you know, he purchased the property and is trying to make some improvements to it. And uh, that's why he's before the board this evening to get this uh, variance. Okay, thank you. Board? I agree with that. Yes, I would have to. I would have to agree there as well. I think uh, since this property is so old, I'm sure that there's been some deterioration of the foundation as it is, and it probably would uh, not only lift it up, but probably give you a lot more uh, stability with that building. Right. I would agree. I'm in agreement as well. All those in favor? Four in the yes. The granting of the variance will result in bringing the applicant's property more nearly into conformance with surrounding properties. From a setback point of view, it, it's not making any difference in the, the setback. Um, I would say from an elevation point of view, this brings the building up to more of a similar elevation to the other buildings around it. Um, I guess that's how I would answer that one, yeah. And I agree with that as well. As the structure gets improved, it becomes more uh, more equivalent with the structures around it. So yep. I think that's right. Yeah, I'd have to agree. I think most of many of the buildings in that area have been improved and, uh, and have undergone this type of thing in the past, so I would have to agree. I'll agree as well. I would agree also. Did we skip number four by chance? I might have done that on purpose, yes. Okay. No, no. we'll go back to it. Thank you. Check it. All right. no, that was five. That was five. Correct. All those in favor? That was four in, the, in favor. <laughs> No other feasible alternatives available to the applicant except this variance. That's question four. Uh, as we discussed briefly, the the applicant could try to raise the structure with leaving the porch on, as we've kind of discussed this evening. I don't think that's a uh, wise or the best option for this site. So I, I think this is the best alternative. We, we met with Brian and, and discussed things with him, and, and this was his recommendation of how to proceed, how best to proceed. So. I think this is the best alternative. Okay. Board members? I think I'd have to agree. In fact, um, I would think from a safety point, if nothing else, when you're trying to, to raise that building, just having that garage away from there is going to be safer for the guys that are, that are trying to raise it. I'd agree with that as well. I'd agree. I think this is the most feasible means of doing it. I agree as well. I also think it's going to be financially one of the better choices. Not that that would be the basis for our decision, but certainly it works in your favor. And uh, I think without doing that, it takes risk, undue risk on the structure itself and potentially doing damage that we wouldn't want to have happen. So I think it's the wise thing to do as well. Uh, to the board, all those in favor? Four in the yes. And I think we left off on six. So the property is not located. This is number seven. Property is not located in whole or in part within the shoreland area as defined by 38 MRSA. And I, I think that was pretty clear. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah that's correct. It's not number six only. Is it do we? And I skipped six as well. Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> <laughs> the, the green, uh, all those in favor on item seven, don't even think about it. <laughs> that's three, uh, six, four in the yes. And we go back to six. The granting of the variance will not have an unreasonably adverse effect on the natural environment. Uh, it will not. The, uh, the site will be restored to the conditions that it's in today. Um, if there's any impact from the raising of the structure, which I don't, I don't believe there will be. Um, so I don't think it has any detrimental effects to the environment. And I would agree with that statement. I mean, you're not changing the footprint. You're not changing the, uh, um, the landscape around it. So you're basically moving the structure up, and it's going to everything else is going to remain the same. So I think it doesn't have any adverse effects. Well, I would certainly agree with that. As well. I would agree. All those in favor? Again, that's four in the yes. So based on that, gentlemen, if there are any further questions or comments from the board, I'm either looking for a motion or further discussion. 
Move to approve appeal 2413 as presented. We got we got to amend that. Right. Is it the foundation? Oh, um, yeah. Is that 2013? Yeah. And say that again, Mr. Crocker, please. 2413. We have to amend because the appeal the appeal says huh. that they're looking to raise it. Mm -hmm. um, I had it here just a moment ago. I think it originally said like peers or pilings, correct? It, it did. It, it, your application originally said posts, and I, I think the applicant would like to leave it open, George, am I right? To be able to put it on posts or a foundation? Mm -hmm. Is it 2013 or 2413? As the shows on the next. Oh. You'll, you'll need to take the microphone, sir. Thank you. It's 2413. Okay. <coughs> I talked to Preston about. Raising the building, and he said, just raise it and put it on floor, floor uh, post. Later on, I talked to a captain. He says, you don't want to put it on post. You want to put it on a foundation. So I had talked to them, and I guess right now I'm thinking I'm going to try and go with a full foundation. It looks more solid, rugged, uh, as if I hadn't run out of money or something. That you put it up on post, looks like it's on still. <laughs> I don't know. So I think right now I'm going to go with full foundation. Okay. Mr. Longstaff, do you have any comments? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm going to, um, <coughs> I think it's wise to leave it open if, if it pleases the board because okay. they will, based on, if, if you folks approve this tonight, there's one more step that they have to go through because it is in the back dune, so <coughs> the GP will have to be consulted. It may they may they may say it does not require any permit from them, but they may the basis of ha not having to get a permit from them, if I'm reading their rules correctly, is that it is an open foundation. So you may want to reserve that okay. decision pending what you can get from DEP in order to, to move forward with the project. Um, so, so I would, yeah, I would recommend sort of leaving that option open. The elevation of the structure is really the issue. It's not so much right. important as to which type of foundation it sits on. Um, if it has to be on piers, you can use lattice work to kind of enclose that and make it look like it's not sitting up high. If it's a foundation wall, then obviously you, you've got something to work with there. You can paint it or do whatever. But let's let's leave it open if it pleases the board, and that gives them the option. With the P regulations. Should we add foundation into the wording here so he has that option? I would just or say just, just, just leave it as just it does building. say specifically placed on post. I just I don't want to. This is what counts. It's, it's, uh, it's the, maybe take the raised on post out of there. And yeah, that's. Raise it, raise it Again, it doesn't say it on the first page of the practical difficulty, which, which states what the appeal is. Okay. Yeah, that's in the letter. That's in the details, but I think it doesn't state it in the first page, so I think we're okay without amending it. Okay. And we do we are on record as to you know, having discussed post versus foundation, so I think it is on record as well. Okay. So I think uh, legally that does cover us. Now we do need to amend it for the number. It is appeal number twenty four thirteen, not twenty thirteen. You had it correct. So you get that correct. I had it wrong. Thank you, Art. All right, so if we can have a motion again, yeah. just to clarify. <laughs> Move to approve appeal 2413 as presented. Second. Seconded. All those in favor? It's four to the yes. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. That's the And that was our last appeal for the evening. Uh, I'd like to open up the board for comments, questions. Um, I'd just like to encourage anyone uh, willing to come out and serve on a committee, please apply through the town website. Um, it doesn't take a huge amount of time, but we do have a couple of openings on this board, but there are many other committees that have uh, <coughs> openings and different interests for different people. So get involved. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, one thing I did want to discuss is uh, we have a minimum number of, of gentlemen on the board this evening, and uh, we have uh, a few members that weren't able to make it. One thing that I do want to uh, encourage all our members to do is if we can't make a meeting, please announce that early 
um, at least a week in advance so that we can plan accordingly. Um, I know all of our schedules are busy and uh, um, we are all voluntary uh, members of the board, but um, please try and be prudent in getting back to us so that you, uh, we know you're going to be here or not, uh, so that we don't have to take any disciplinary action because I wouldn't want to have to do that. So, uh, Thank you. Any other comments or questions or a motion? Move to adjourn. Second that. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Have a great evening.